Jesus did not come to gain anything. He came to lose everything. So that is a gospel that men can understand. And that's what is given unto us. In the promise was never all of these things we are thinking about. Of course, he said when you give up these things, you will gain them. But I'm telling you, says, not everybody truly really gain them. Because when you look at the archives of faith in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, not everybody get commercially the same thing as everybody got. But everyone that was willing to die has a report that was so strong enough that men cannot deny. So what I'm trying to let you understand, if you are in this pathway, the only way your ordination can be unlocked is when you come to a point where in that territory, in that region where you find yourself, you don't subscribe to the discretion that the environment has given when they say no, you say yes. When they say it cannot, you say it can. When everybody is running away, you are staying. Not because you are not afraid, but you are just willing to die. At that point in time, you now begin to see the strength of God being supplied. Do, I, do you realize that God was not sufficiently willing to commit so much to Jesus until Jesus was at the mount and he was willing to say, if I die, I die. If I perish, I perish. When he said, not my will, but your will. Let your will. At that point in time, resurrection was made available. Because so long as you, it was him that preached the gospel. He said, whosoever believe in me, although he's dead, he will live. But whosoever live and believe in me will never die. Because this same life that you think you have, if it is contended for and is taken, you should be glad. But if because it was contended for, and you feel like, Kai, just because it's contended for, I should give up on this so that I can gain something. Just when you decide to give up on this superior life, at that point you have died. Most people that give up on God would have actually lived if they actually remained. They came to kill you in the name of Jesus. If you have actually stood, you would have seen the power that is available in God that only Matthias would have laid hold of. And it's not a matter, you see, let me tell you. Many people live and they die. Do you know how many billionaires live and die every day? Who remember them? We are talking about the matters that shake the entire ecosystem of the earth. In the process of time, only those that are willing to live and die for the Lord will ever be remembered. Take all through Genesis to Revelation. Everyone that is named is remembered. And it was weight are those that do not even have a life for themselves. In fact, some of them, their family did not matter. There was no time they gathered and said there was a family. In this family, the firstborn is this. The second point is this, the wife is this, she can do this, she can do that. When you come to the center of the excellency of the kingdom, only the king rule. And if your life is not as an offering drink to him, you have wasted your existence. That's why in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 from 18, the message translation says something. He said, in this ongoing warfare, prayer is essential. We are demanded to pray hard and pray long. That is to let you understand that the reason why prayer is made as an emphasis in scripture is because our survival as believers in this end time is upon the strength of the economy of prayer. You can never make progress in spiritual journey if you don't pray. You can teach everything you want to teach. In the days of war, only those that have prayed can say you want to die because they have died in the place of prayer already. In fact, their life is already exchanged. Because if you cannot pray, all what you believe is what they have given you as a promise. The promise of God are good, but they are activated by prayer. All the covenant of God, they are good, but only those that understand the secret place where transactions are made beyond the visibility of mortal men can be able to lay hold. Jesus was willing to die at that altar of prayer. The Bible says while he prayed, as he prayed, as he prayed, what took him there? He has been praying. But at that very moment now, he's about to give up his entire self. He was about to transcend another level. So he was trying to understand there is a glory I have before time. But this glory, I'm not sure whether I will still have it because I'm about to die. I'm about to give up myself. Okay, can we have a discussion beyond what I think I know? He has attended the best Bible school. He has known the scripture. But now he needs another preaching that men cannot preach. So he too was needing motivation. Him too was needing encouragement. So he was there. He was crying. He was praying. As he was praying, the Bible said Moses and Elias, they came. The prophet and the law came. And they prophesied and they gave him the law again. He has to come to a point where he has to agree on the will of God. Why are you asking, is it my will? Is it your will? The Bible said Jesus who was crucified even before the foundation of the earth. That means he knew if Jesus is Jesus, he should never be ignorant. That means he knows everything that is supposed to happen. In fact, to me, even in this moment that he was still asking whether it's the will of God, 
I believe you should have known it. If he is actually truly God, why then? Is he perplexed? It means in your journey, in this pathway, a day will come, you will even doubt yourself. A day will come, you'll be wondering, did you really call me? Am I truly the son of God? Why do you think the devil asked him, if you are truly the son of God, do this? If Jesus was not in the culture of that time, subscribing to prayer and fasting, he would have actually listened to the devil. Because the deception begins when he begins to hear another voice. I bet you, why he isolated himself was because he began to perceive something different. And at that point, he needed to hear another sound. He needed to hear another voice. He needed to be able to survive again. And he knew that the only way he can open the windows of the corridors of that moment was to pray. So the Bible says he prayed. He prayed, he prayed for the first time. As he prayed, his countenance was altered. Everything he knew about himself was changed. And immediately when that thing was changed, he was able to ascend a crescendo in the spirit. There was a place where Moses dwelt. There was a place where Elijah dwelt. They say, if you don't leave the earth, and if you don't leave heaven and come to the earth now, our hope will be dashed out. And they have to appear. And by the time they came, it became a memorial. That memorial was not unto mortal men. It was actually a memorial for him. Because at that very moment was the defining time. Because at that time was when he knew that he's actually in the will of God again. So the question is this. Whose will was he living before? At every point in time, a time will come you will doubt what you are doing. This is the reason why many pastors commit suicide. A man of God came and sat down. He told me, see, I will go and kill myself. I said, who do you do good to? If you kill yourself, we'll continue preaching. In fact, <laughs> anything you do, we we'll still continue. Because when it comes to this kingdom matter, I'm telling you the sincere truth. You can die and this will still continue. That's the sincere truth. The problem was he need to hear a voice again. Because a spirit lied to him. Because when the spirit say you are failed, when you believe it, you start failing. When the spirit say you are nothing, when you believe it, you become nothing. Everybody that became anything had a spirit he had a voice and when they had it they rose according to the strength of that no wonder paul said i rose by revelation so when he isolated himself when god began to speak he rose what speaking what voice are you hearing because jesus needed to hear another voice but there was a protocol it was that of prayer in the moment in the moment and in the time where you look discouraged where you look confused when it looks as though nothing is working my brother can you still pray if you can still pray something is working because until you give up on praying you have not failed see let me tell you as long as you can pray you are not a failure i don't care what anybody tell you i don't care you may not agree with me you may not believe me but i'm telling this and say to you if so long as you can pray if you cannot pray at least you can sing but eventually there is a horn of worship there is an hour that anytime you sing that thing and oil come even if they give you the sacrifice from office come back to your room and sing let the oil let the anointing just let god touch that your horn let it still exalt it because so long as you can still do that prosecute that thing that will make god come he will be aware that you still exist the guy came to me he said he has done this thing if he god will kill him i said if god wants to kill you you won't be talking to me now I say, go back to the secret place. Go and do what you can do. You say, you cannot pray. I say, can you sing? I say, can, I say, what can you do among all these spirituals? I just want God to see you. You are learning, but me, I want him to see you. So that if he can kill you, let him kill you. If he can't kill you, if he see you, he will help you. He say, hey, but God will not answer my prayer. I say, if you will not answer your prayer, then just go and tell him, God, I have sinned, kill me. The guy went as he began to cry. As he was crying, the presence of God came. When it enveloped him, strength was given. And he began to write the things God tell him. And he wrote, he wrote, he came, he showed me. I said, did God kill you? He said, no. I said, there is something you may not understand. 